Now, you... Dear screenwriter, voice of a generation. <laughs> well, I... Citizen of the world. Uh, yeah, well, I never... Ripped from the comfortable childhood in Canada, thrown into the turbulent waters of adolescence in Kobe, Japan. How did you stay afloat? You mean... You mean in high school? Uh, well, my dad got uh, transferred overseas, and um, it was a really excellent experience, actually. I, I was really grateful for it. Grateful. What is your biggest secret, David? Pardon me? You can tell us. Oh, well, it's not much of a secret, but I, um, uh, I have a tattoo of Kobe behind my ear. Tattoo? Splendid! Yeah, it's... I mean, it's not terribly big. What are you wearing? I, what do you mean? Why are you here? Oh, well, I was hoping to promote my new movie. I'm just coming off of the set. No, David Hater. Why here wearing an eye patch? Oh, the eye patch. Uh, this is pretty cool, actually. Mm. Gives me uh, uh, real time information and, and uh, you know, weather, traffic reports. Um, Actually, watching a baseball game as we, uh, as we speak. What drives you? What are your dreams? Uh, well, you know, I'd have to say my dream project. Let your dreams drive you. Oh, a message of hope to today's young people from David Hayter. Mm. I never actually said that. No. Will you ever respect the ideologies, or ethnicity. It's an endless series of proxy battles fought by mercenaries and machines. War, and its consumption of life, has become a well-oiled machine. War has changed. ID tag soldiers carry ID tag weapons, use ID tag gear, Nanomachines inside their bodies enhance and regulate their abilities. Genetic control, information control, 
Emotion control. Battlefield control. Everything is monitored and kept under control. War has changed. The age of deterrence has become the age of control. All in the name of averting catastrophe from weapons of mass destruction. And he who controls the battlefield controls history.
We've got to go. You've got an old friend waiting for you. Vatikan. The test results. Proteome analysis was positive. But the mRNA analysis turned up negative. The wrinkled skin, the hardened arteries. Your early aging symptoms look like classic Werner syndrome. But none of the tests were able to pinpoint the cause. So? Well, judging by how rapidly the aging has progressed, I'd say... A year at best, right? Snake, let's try another doctor. <laughs> it won't make any difference. I'm not an ordinary man to begin with. Not to mention Fox die. You're right. But we don't know where Naomi is. Not a colonel anymore, Snake. I figured the only place I'd see you dressed like that would be at your daughter's wedding. What are you doing these days? I'm working for an organization under the UN Security Council. The analysis and assessment staff of the PMC Oversight and Inspection Committee. Yeah, I remember the resolution being passed a few years ago. Snake, I uh, came across some information in my work. Huh? We found him. In the Middle East. What? I'll explain along the way. We've got to stop him. Now. Before it's too late. Liquid's made his move. We found him. Preparing to unleash his insurrection. Liquid is lying in wait in a Middle Eastern war zone. Track him down. Only two eggs today? Solidus must have taken the day off. Seven, eight, nine, two, five, nine, oh, three, six, oh, seven, three, three, oh, five, three, oh, five, four, eight, eight, two, oh, four, six, six, five, two.
This is Snake. Do you read me? What's the situation? I'm just inside the city limits. This place is crawling with lizards. Ah, AT Corps' unmanned bipedal weapons. Officially designated Irving by the US military. They've spread like wildfire among the PMCs. There are more of those things now in service than tanks. They've got tough armor plating and are highly agile to boot. Your best bet is to stay out of their sights. Unmanned. Pretty soon they'll have put living, breathing soldiers out of work. Even so, that's an awful lot of gecko for this scenario. Their numbers exceed the war price for that region. It must have something to do with Liquid's arrival on the scene. You really think he's here? You'll have to find the Army's operatives and ask them yourself. Oh, and Snake, I went ahead and used the Mark II to scout out the area before your arrival. You'll find it up ahead. Mark II? It's a remote mobile terminal. Sonny and I built it. The Mark II will provide you with a map of the area as well as any battle situation data. You should find it before you do anything else. Okay, got it. The rendezvous point is marked on your map. I'll be waiting for you there. Avoid unnecessary combat whenever possible. In this war, neither side is your enemy. There's no point whatsoever in you getting into a fight. Got it?
Snake, it's me. Huh? Otacon? Sorry to keep you waiting, Snake. Allow me to introduce Metal Gear Mark II. Metal Gear? That's right. Just like Rex. But this gear's not a weapon. It's a remote mobile terminal designed to provide you with operational support. Where are you? I'm in the Nomad. Where else? I'll be watching you through the Mark II. Mm, wish I was good with gadgets. Hey, I'll be with you in spirit. Anyway, because you had to dress up as a militiaman, I had the Mark II bring you some goodies. Starting with this. Put it on your left eye. Looks like an eye patch. I call it the solid eye. It's an all-purpose goggle that displays radar images and other data in 3D. You can also switch it over to light amplifying night vision. The rebels are out there. It looks like they've got the government's PMC troops beat, at least in numbers. And this is their own turf. Snake, I know this is a sneaking mission, but you'll need to protect yourself. Installed a suppressor. And here's a tranquilizer gun. Oh, how thoughtful. It predates the implementation of the system. By some miracle, it was never recycled. It's getting tough these days finding decent guns that aren't controlled. Follow you wherever you go, like this. I'll activate stealth so it doesn't attract any attention. If you need it, just bring up the start button menu. Got it. Snake, the informants who said they saw a liquid here should be a little further up. Head for the rendezvous point. I've placed a mark on the radar in the upper right corner of the solid eye. It's a war zone out there. Stay on your toes. Snake, it's kind of a schlep, but I've sent you data on an alternate route. Follow the mark on your radar.
It's pretty dark in there. Switch the solid eye to night vision mode. Pretty sweet, huh? huh? Oh, hold it. Watch where you're pointing that thing. <laughs> Who are you? Neither enemy nor friend. Voila. You're not with the militia, and you're not PMC. I'm a weapons wholesaler. All shapes, all sizes. But there's no need to worry, because all my shit's been laundered. Laundered? <laughs> You see, I 
take ID guns like the PMCs use and make some mods. Then you can use them without having to match IDs. In other words, I'm a gun launderer. You can call me Drebin. Drebin? Yeah, they use that for all of us. There are more of you. All over the world. Not that I ever met any of them personally. Me, I'm Drebin number 893. You ain't a registered PMC employee, are you? You need a guy like me. Consider it a welcome gift. Take it. The M4. The official carbine model used by the U.S. Army, developed from the M16 service rifle. This one's a top-of-the-line model, real popular with the big PMCs. High precision, not like that government-issue shit. It's, uh, free-floating, of course. Relax, that barrel's clean. Is the Hyder CQC compatible? The beauty of this sucker is that it's got a lot of customizable parts. Change it up the way you want to meet your everyday needs. Flip up sight, rail system. Not bad. Yeah, well, you know, I get a lot of noobs around here. And if you need them, I got a wide selection of aftermarket parts as well. The frame's pretty rigid. No rattle. Go ahead, give her a squeeze. Hmm. Trigger. Really? That's weird. What's weird? Wait, I got it. I bet you're using an older generation of nano machines. Older generation? Sometimes they don't really jive with the new system. Seriously, who are you? Oh, slow down. <clears throat> oh, yeah. My day job's working at AT Security. I'm in charge of production control. So I get my hands on all the ID chips before they even register. Have a sip. Mm -mm. It's a side of AT the public don't see. From the looks of it, you ain't with any state army. But you ain't exactly green, neither. You've got last-gen nanomachines, so I'm guessing, former U.S. Army, <laughs> I don't know what you're here for, but you want to be well-equipped, am I right? So, can we talk business or what? You won't regret it. What's your take on Emoticon? I don't particularly like the guy. But it looks like we'll need his help with those ID guns. Sonny's been doing a little sleuthing for us. Drebin, a well-known gun launderer in war economy circles. He's a businessman who deals mainly in selling black market firearms to small PMCs and local militia. Somalia, the Balkans, Lebanon, Darfur, Chechnya, Timor, Peru, the Punjab, Kashmir, Colombia. This guy really gets around. How's he pull it off, anyway? You can create a non-ID gun by replacing the ID recognition chip with a counterfeit version. This enables you to bypass the ID recognition process and use the gun. The problem is that there's still a record of the chip being replaced on the system side. Drebin's an employee of AT Security. He must have connections on the inside erasing records for him. You think the Patriots are involved somehow? I'm not so sure. If the Patriots were running the system from behind the scenes, then a weasel like Drebin would be a real pain in their collective ass. Can he be trusted? Remember, Drebin's a green collar. He makes his living off the war economy. He doesn't let emotions in the way of business, and he never gets his own hands dirty. The only thing he trusts is money. I share your concern, but what if we keep him at arm's length? 
Use him only to get intel and the supplies we need. Keep it strictly business. All right. So, we ready to make a deal or what? Okay then, let's talk business. This is a war zone. There's product coming in here by the truckload. And you'll be picking up a lot of guns in the field, I'm sure. Whatever guns you don't need, I'll take and buy them off you. That'll earn you points you can cash in for services. Like what? I'll launder your ID guns. No more locks. And I can also sell you the guns I've got in stock. Let me show you. To ensure you can use nine ID guns, I'm gonna have to suppress the old nano machines you got in you. Otherwise, they'll interfere with the system. Here, stick yourself with this. It's full of suppressor nano machines. Relax, it won't hurt. You're scared of needles or something? Now you can use non-ID guns, no problem. Hey, be nice to our guest. Step outside. From now on, when you pick up an ID gun that says lock, you just let me know. You name it, I can launder it. Of course, it'll cost you. The going rate depends on the war price at the time. <clears throat> Man, I gotta give this shit a rest. Looks like you're doing pretty well for yourself. You might say that. What with the war economy and all, and the system clamping down on things. System codes are the law now, and control's essentially absolute, paving the way for fat profits if you're willing to bend the law. The man keeps on growing thanks to the war economy. I sell ID guns to the PMCs and state armies, and naked guns to terrorist groups and paramilitaries. And these ID guns can't be sold on the black market. System's practically a license for us arms dealers to print money. Privatizing the military's made the PMCs big and bloated. The fatter the PMCs get, the line between civilian and soldier is gonna get real blurry. Sooner or later, the whole damn human race is gonna be green collars. More like we're all gonna be fighting proxy wars. But hey, this war economy puts the food on my table. You're a green collar too, aren't you? Yeah, it's in your eyes. You've seen a lot of combat. What makes you think you know me? Nothing to be ashamed of. I'm the same way. I grew up here too. I got no interest in the outside world. All right then. If you need me, holler. We specialize in speedy service. Catch my drift.
I know what you're thinking, but Drebin does have a point. The world depends on war, on the war economy. Can you imagine what would happen if war just disappeared overnight? Otacon, you and Drebin both mentioned something about a war price earlier. What did you mean by that? It's a kind of market price, one that fluctuates according to demand, not only for PMCs and military industry, but for the production, distribution, and energy supply networks that support them. Hmm. It's been growing by leaps and bounds, and investors are really starting to take notice. As the fighting in any given area becomes increasingly intense and prolonged, the war price goes up. No doubt Drebin's rates are linked to that war price. The longer and bloodier a battle becomes, the higher service prices are gonna get. And to put it another way, the quieter things are, the better the bargains. Snake, we'll use the Mark II to deal with Drebin from here on out. He's what you might call a street vendor. The Mark II can act as a kind of delivery boy, connect you with him. I'm adding a Drebin menu item to the Mark II's weapon menu. Whenever you pick up multiple units of the same weapon, any extras will automatically be sold to Drebin. Any ammo that's inside gets added to your cash. In other words, you keep the ammo, and the weapon itself gets traded to Drebin for points. I see. You can then use the points you've earned to unlock ID guns or buy new weapons. Sounds good. We should assume Drebin has other agents collecting guns for him besides you, Snake. You know, freelance green collars who collect weapons in exchange for services? Guess I'll have to rely on him for now. Okay. Now go meet up with our informants, Rat Patrol. Snake, hurry and get to the rendezvous point with our informants. First, you'll have to get to the other side of that collapsed building. The only way across is straight through. Careful, Snake. The walls could come down any second. It's the enemy. Yeah, I can see him! We've been spotted! Damn it! Return fire!
And now, Metal Gear Solid 4 Integral Podcast. Recorded at Konami HQ in downtown Tokyo, this is your host, Ryan Payton, for the exclusive in-game broadcast of Metal Gear Solid 4 Integral Podcast. Welcome to the first ever Metal Gear Solid 4 Integral Podcast, number one. It's going to be included in MGS4. As you know, playing through the game, as you're doing right now, you've got the, the iPod equipped, and you're listening to this show, and you're going to be able to download future shows in the, uh, in the coming months. But first, let me introduce uh, Aki Saito, who's joining me on the program. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me, Aki. It's, uh, it's kind of weird. We're, we're in the future now. It's, uh, it's 106 days in the future <laughs> that we're recording this. Yes, yes. Or that, that we're, we're broadcasting this. We're recording this in February, mm -hmm. knowing that this is going to be burnt onto the Blu-ray disc. Um, for millions of people to enjoy. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I've never been burnt on a Blu-ray disc before. Uh, me neither. Okay, so Snake. People listening to this, they, they come across the, the iPod in MGS4. Yes. They come across this episode, and they, they're wondering, now what exactly what exactly is this, and what is this for? Yes. Good question. This is to, well, actually, it's one of these, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, to ease the tension when you're playing the game, right. things like that as well. Yeah, you can play your own music, you can play this, you can ease the tension mm -hmm. by listening to our, our voices. Our, our stupid voices. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you could you also ease the tension of Snake, yes. because his sight gauge will fill up if yes. you're listening to music, exactly. or if you're listening to this program. Mm -hmm. Metal Gear Solid 4, Integral Podcast. This is really cool in the game. Obviously, as players know, they're, they're playing this on an Apple iPod, not mm. just a generic MP3 player. Mm. Now, Aki, you worked on this project. You worked on, on getting approvals from Apple. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that, that process of getting the <laughs> iPod into the game, which is very cool? Yes.
Snake, I'm detecting a trap in your vicinity. It's a that uses an infrared sensor as a detonation trigger. It's a remote control device, and I'm detecting salt traces of volatile sleep gas. Trigger it, and you'll be knocked out, so be careful. I'm picking up a faint radio signal from that thing. I'm guessing it might be transmitting its operating status in real time. I'd leave those sensors alone if I were you.
Drop your weapon! Drop your weapon! All right. Here. E easy now. <sighs> Don't move! You haven't even taken the safety off, rookie. Careful. I'm no rookie. I'm a... How the hell did you ever survive ten years? Don't move! CQC. Real big boss, huh? Lower your weapon! Slowly now. I wouldn't try anything funny if I were you. You? What happened to your face? Huh. Accelerated aging. They don't know the cause. Oh my god. Meryl. You're my informant in the U.S. military. And... You must be the inspector sent by the U.N. Akiba! Uh, uh, Commander! Uh, 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 sorry. This is Rat Patrol Team 01. We're with the CID, one of the bodies investigating PMC activity. First hounds, now rats. Here, you can have this back. It's been four days since Liquid arrived in the area. And since then, this woman's been with him. She doesn't look like a combatant. Probably some kind of advisor. Maybe a scientist. So one unit. Why? Something wrong with that? Here, I'll introduce you to the team. That's Ed, our radio man and sniper. The sleeping giant is Jonathan. <clears throat> Don't stand behind him. He hates it when people go around his back. And finally... 
Johnny. Everybody just calls him Akiba. Commander, I've finished installing the sensors. <sighs> okay, Akiba. Anyway. Maybe it's because someone taught me well. A certain legendary hero who suddenly disappeared. You quit the unit. Me? I never gave up on you. Or on Foxhound. Back then, I just wanted you to accept me. I wanted you to turn around and see who I was. But I've put the past behind. I'm done playing little love games. So, what are you here for? Threat assessment. The PMCs. Really? Because I heard a rumor there's an assassin out there targeting their leader. Well, that's some rumor. I'm only here because the UN wants me to assess the impact and effects of PMCs on their refugee protection efforts. That's all? More than enough for a retired vet like me. I know he's plotting an insurrection. But as long as AT Security's system is in place, there's no way he'll succeed. How can you be so sure? They've implemented a system that monitors in real time every single soldier engaged in combat action, whether he's state army or PMC. Each individual soldier has been fully ID tagged with nanomachines injected into their bodies for that purpose. The nanomachines keep track of the soldiers and their real time personal data 24 hours a day. They monitor each man's position, movement speed, reserve ammo, firing accuracy, wounds, rations, water intake and supply, sweat secreted, heart rate, blood pressure and sugar levels, oxygen. All the data gathered on body condition, on sensory organ data showing pain and fear, data on every internal response within the body. All of it is collected by an AI at the system's core. This data is monitored at HQ to enable command to make quicker, more precise, more rational decisions. It also enables crisis management for each individual soldier. It's being used by the US military, by state armies and allied countries, by PMCs. Even police agencies are starting to adopt it. Unless they agree to implement the system, PMCs aren't permitted to send troops anywhere. You've got these system nanomachines and you too. Of course. Our unit plays by the rules, same as everybody else. It was creepy at first, knowing you're being watched 24-7, but I've gotten used to it. It gives us a lot of advantages in the field, too. We get a clearer picture of what's going on around us, so there's less confusion during missions. And our nanomachines communicate with each other, making teamwork a lot smoother. And that's not all the system does for us. It's also a security guarantee against the PMCs. Security guarantee. That's right. The PMCs are combat groups without states or ideologies. They're not fighting out of nationalism or for a cause. They don't care why the war is being fought. They're just bodies fighting on someone else's behalf. They're mercenaries, a commodity. So it's easy to imagine them betraying their clients by joining the enemy or refusing to fight or committing humanitarian atrocities. To keep these things in check, they ensured that no one can use firearms or military vehicles without the proper system ID. It's true for every piece of equipment out there. So even if the PMCs tried to mount a terrorist attack or coup d'etat, their weapons and equipment would automatically be locked out. They wouldn't be able to move, attack, or engage in combat of any kind. And there's more. All the data on their position, personnel, and combat strength is leaked to us by the nanomachines. Even if they managed to circumvent the system by getting the nanomachines out of each soldier's body, they'd be losing their IDs in the process, so they couldn't use their weapons. 
And the Patriots are behind this. Lale Lule Lo. What are you talking about? Never mind. So this system is foolproof, huh? Completely. They call it SOP. Sons of the Patriots. The AI that controls it is a tightly guarded secret, both at Arms Tech Security, where it was developed, and at the Pentagon. There's no way a third party could get control of it. I just met a guy who said he can launder ID guns. The system does have holes. <laughs> there can't be more than a few hundred of those gun launderers. It's just a grassroots movement. It's not like they can affect the entire PMC war machine. Anyway. Liquid would have had to register as a PMC in the system to assemble an army that massive. His PMCs might even exceed the U.S. military in terms of numbers, but as long as they're registered, their soldiers' activities are constantly being monitored. So long as the U.S. responds immediately when Liquid makes his move, we can take them down by force. By force, huh? When Arsoc heard about Liquid's plans, they sent us to sniff around the PMCs. Even with this SOP keeping an eye on things, there are always trouble spots to deal with in the field. Disorderly conduct, disobeying orders, contract violations. We act as backup for the system by monitoring the soldiers. PMC inspections are always carried out on the battlefield. That's why we're authorized to carry and use weapons. We've lost five inspection teams in the past few months alone. They were all undercover, inside Liquid's PMCs. Then, if you got caught... We'd be exterminated like rats. But we're smarter than that. We've been mingling with the PMCs, and after three months of searching God knows how many battlefields, we finally tracked him down. When we reported that we'd found Liquid, our superiors ordered us to provide the UN investigators with intel. <laughs> but I didn't know it'd be you. Didn't the Colonel tell you he was sending me? Colonel? Don't tell me it's Campbell! Yeah. He put you up to this? You didn't know. Uh, you've got to be kidding! You expect me to work with my uncle? Meryl. This is bullshit. He's not my father. violation of the need-to-know role. Then... why are you still calling him uncle? You're still calling him Colonel. He's your father. As far as I'm concerned, we're still uncle and niece. I will never forgive that womanizing piece of shit. Meryl! He, uh... remarried. Really? His new wife's about my age. I hear she's even got a kid. It's as if he's given up on making up with his own daughter. Men. Selfish, egotistical pigs. Commander. What is it? There's 20 of them, and they're not from that PMC praying mantis either. It's the fraud. His private troops. Oh, crap. This is not good. Oh, oh. Uh, were you being followed? No. Akiba! They might have seen the reflection off my scope lens. 
Whoa. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. You guys think it was my fault? Oh, 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 no. Oh. It wasn't my fault, I swear. It wasn't my fault. Oh, man. Oh, look, I... What? Dumbass. We're moving out. Meryl, where's Liquid? At a camp up ahead. I'll fill you in later, if we're still alive. Follow me. Contact. These guys are with Liquid's private army. Shoot first, think later. We'll use the stairs and get out through the back door on the first floor. <laughs> we'll change the route as necessary. I'm on point. Stay close. Got it? Got it. Got it. Akiba, breathe deep. <sighs> Got it. We've got a real live legendary hero with us. Try not to choke. <laughs> Move!
The nanomachine network inside each unit member's body lets us share each other's senses. They can see what I see. And it helps control pain. Is that part of the system, too? With SOP, my team can literally operate as one. Well, except for a certain someone who's not much of a team player. So, what do you think? Is your age of heroes finally over? <laughs> I'm no hero. Never was. Never will be. You haven't changed at all, Snake. But... Your body... Are you gonna be alright? This get-up doubles as a muscle suit. I can still get around. Liquid's camp is up ahead. I'll mark it on your map. Thanks. Akiba! One man's blunder can compromise the whole team. I'm sorry, Commander. Uh. Be careful, Snake. Liquid is. Yeah, I'm confirming the location. It's to the north of where you are. Meryl's really changed, hasn't she, Snake? She's a lot more self-assured. <laughs> I wonder how much of that has to do with the system. The senses you used to develop through extended training and experience can now be obtained without even working for them. Seems once you're under the system's control, you don't even need experience at all. It even beats that VR training that was all the rage a few years back. Yeah. 
The growing need for PMCs has led to the creation of a more reliable, cost-effective supply of elite soldiers. It's also made the child soldier phenomenon more problematic than ever. Can the nanomachines do anything to counteract post-traumatic stress disorder? Good question. They might provide a degree of psychological stability. You'd think so? That geek kid, Akiba, he was really starting to lose it. And technologically, the system should be able to optimize each soldier's personality traits. And that big guy, he didn't seem to be feeling any pain at all. Augmenting the soldier's existing experience and psychological fortitude. But a soldier's gotta have more than that. The times have changed, Snake. Just like Merrill. <sighs> Snake, hurry to the PMC camp. Based on what Merrill told us, liquid should be there. Okay, time to head for the surface.
Those things just wipe the floor with the militiamen. Must be the special unit that wounded militiaman was talking about. And now the wreckage is blocking the way. Snake, head straight for Liquid's camp. Yeah. 
location. Acknowledged. Sending reinforcements. Use extra caution. Problems. Go check it out. Yes, sir. Annika, wait here. I knew it. Snake, you're here to kill Liquid, aren't you? That's the mission. Are you going to stop me? My mission is to inspect the PMCs. I'm not in a position to take action. All I can do is stand by and watch. I can't help you, understand? I'm a peacekeeper, here to keep order. Understood.
activate it. You won't be a prisoner to fate. Then go. Fulfill your destiny.
Grab 